Hello everybody and welcome back to another Pathfinder Plays and today just released the Dead Matter development vlog number 7. The developers have been hard at work and we see that in what they have shown us in this 6 minute and 30 second video. And I'm going to be going over the stuff they shared and express my thoughts and other opinions on it. Let's get started. First things first, they mentioned some new locations. They mentioned the Lakeside Cabins, Summer Camp, Electrical substation, which they did say was a source of electricity, along with the radio station, trailer park, there's another one I think they said, and then metal warehouses. Now, one of the things that I actually got really excited about was the fact that I'm pretty sure in the Discord they said that you can take over electrical substations, you can utilize those to power your base. So if you're large enough and mighty enough in this game, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to utilize that stuff. However, that does mean that you're expanding your territory, you're also going to make sure that not only will you be able to protect your base, but you will be able to protect that electrical substation. My thought goes straight to the NPCs. So we know that you're able to hire non-playable characters to protect your base. They can't travel with you like in uh, the Fallout series. However, they can protect your base. So I wonder if you can assign them to different areas that you quote conquer and quote, I suppose you could call it. So can you assign NPCs to the electrical substations? I don't know. If not, I feel like it would be rather tedious and for you to protect and rather easy for enemy players to just go and destroy it or try to take it over and subvert that electricity to their base. And it will be a constant back and forth. So not really any concerns, just more uh, inquiring, I, I think, needs to be shed on what that means. As far as the radio station, man, I mean, I've talked about it before in my videos. I think it's going to be hilarious. I feel like people are going to be jacking around on it more than actually trying to help. But you'll, you'll get your sweaty players in there and your hardcore uh, role players and they're actually using it like uh, some may have anticipated. But I'm excited to see what happens with it. One of the things I was really excited about was they mentioned the minor locations which everything that I mentioned right now, they said that was with roughly within walking distance in the closed alpha, which is great. All the points of interest are, are within traveling areas, we know that, but the minor locations are what I'm interested in. One of the worst things in a game, especially an open world survival horror game, is walking from point A to point B with literally nothing to see. But this game is awesome. It's got the trees with the physics, it'll blow in the wind, the grass moves around, it has the amazing ambient sounds, it just seeps you in the mood. But not only does it have that, we now know that they have minor locations spread across the landscape. Places that you can go to and visit and explore on your way to a more advanced location. So I'm really excited for the immersion that they're putting in there. They did say that along with those minor locations, they did add radio towers and other markers is what they call them. Players can use these to guide themselves so they can have even more immersion and less time dealing with the UI and pulling up maps or whatever else they decide to implement. As far as vehicles, we already know that there was a, I believe there was a truck that we saw in some previous videos, but they haven't said too much about uh, vehicles, but they did bring up the sedan. They did say something that was real interesting though. They said there was going to be a police variation, which completely makes sense because it's a stereotypical police car. However, they they said in their uh, uh, Dead Matter Discord that there was no more police occupation. So now I'm confused. Uh, I'm not calling them liars. I mean, goodness gracious, it's a early. It's not even early, it's not even early access. It's not even really released yet. It's still conceptual at this point. Uh, so they can change whatever the heck they want. It's their game. But I wonder if police occupation is back now because they said in there that if you choose the police job, you'll have a cruiser to match which I am all for. I think that will create some really amazing role playing. I think it will create a really good immersion. Uh, I just think it will be fun. Along with that, they added the news van, which some will be drivable, some will not. I think the special thing about news vans is that they have radio equipment in them, so they could be somewhat of a mobile radio station. Talking about the medical side of things, which up until this point, there really has been that much. There was some stuff shared in the sneak peek media section and the sneak peek areas in the Discord channel, but we aren't allowed to share those anymore until now, whenever they released them in a more polished state like they wanted to. 
So the things that they released are an epinephrine auto injector, a morphine auto injector, and a blood type testing kit. The other two I kind of expected something like that, but the blood type testing kit is something completely unique to this game. I have not seen that anywhere else and it's so exciting to see. Now, along with the blood type testing kit, you'll always be able to remember your blood type because the second you use a blood testing kit, it will always be displayed in your medical journal along with any conditions you have and your current nutritional status. So it's in depth, but it's not too crazy. It's not overwhelming like some may find in the game scum. Now, along with those two medicines and the blood testing kit, they added 13 different conditions which include sprained ankles, leg fractures, infections, food poisonings, pain, broken ribs, hypothermia, hypothermia, poisoning, bleeding, embedded shrapnel, embedded bullets, and anaphylaxis. Now obviously all of these are amazing. Anaphylaxis, I mean I've heard of anaphy anaphylactic shock and what, uh, how is that going to look in game? I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm floored. Like, you're just going to be eating something, or you're going to get stung by a random bug, or you're going to be wearing latex, because that can cause shock too. Uh, and all of a sudden, you're going to see your character or another character just stroke out and die if they don't have the correct medicine. I don't know how quick it, it goes, how quick it, it, it onsets, but it's going to be really amazing to see, I think. As far as food poisoning, I'm interested to see how they're going to let us know if something's poisoned or not, if we're even going to be able to tell. This would kind of go into knowing if food is out of date because you can get poisoned whether somebody actually poisons your food or if it's uh, just rotten. So it'll be cool to see how they do that. Same thing with infections. Another thing that's really, really interesting to me is the embedded shrapnel and the embedded bullets. That's a whole new level for me again because usually whenever you get shot, you just do, do a quick bandage animation, and then that's that. You don't need to worry about anything being embedded inside you. They just dissipate. You just need to stop the bleeding. But th this is amazing to me. You literally have to worry about embedded bullets, embedded shrapnel. How do? What's the process of getting those out of you? Do you need to use tweezers? Is there some, do you need another player to help you? I don't know. Do you need to disinfect the area with alcohol? I don't know. There's so many intricacies with getting shrapnel and bolts out of the human body that I'll be interested to see in how far they actually take this. Now you may be wondering how exactly do you get shrapnel embedded in you? Bullets I understand, but how do shrapnel? Obviously explosions. And that's a good segue into the next area, which is the weapons. You can have shrapnel damage from grenades. They have three different types of grenades. They have frags, which are the obvious ones that cause shrapnel damage. They will kill you, but if they don't kill you and you're in the explosion radius, they will cause shrapnel damage. There is the smoke grenade, which obviously blocks visibility, and then there's the flash bang to blind players. Now, they did say that these will be rare, However, they have deterministic paths. Their physics do not follow the other physics in the game, which means that you can realistically copy and perfectly throw things in the same area every single time. They want you to be able to use these to their fullest extent, no restrictions because they are so rare. So you can bounce them off walls, bounce them off pillars, do crazy stinking things with them, and you can do it over and over again until you run out because they will be rare. Along with that, they added a check ammo key, so you will no longer need to question how much ammo you actually have or open up your inventory to count how many bullets you have. You'll be able to press a key and check your ammo capacity. They added a laser point attachment, which will be amazing for close quarter combat and hip firing, because now you'll just be able to point the laser at them, keep your eye on the laser, and keep your laser on the body, and you'll be good to go. Along with that, they added a gun jamming system, so keep your guns clean. All right, you can't just use them forever and expect them to function properly. Something that was really cool and I really appreciate them for doing is already working on visual bugs. If you guys watched their previous development vlog, you may have noticed that the drum magazine being installed into the AK-47 had some texture clashes, some uh, mesh issues, it was clipping a bit. 
they fixed that. The drum mags no longer have buggy visuals, and the service rifle, which some hated the look of it, has been completely changed. The skin, animation, everything. Something really cool that could also be added to the medical system is the new system for the attribute system called CETA. It stands for Strength, Endurance, Dexterity, and Agility. Now for the Strength, the Strength aspect affects your carrying weight, your hit points, and how hard you can hit with melee weapons. The Endurance affects your limb health and their resistance to poison and infection. The dexterity is quick reflexes and good motor skills, which include your ability to cycle the action on shotguns and reloading. Agility, it affects how quickly you can raise a weapon after sprinting and all other things related to sprinting. It affects how quickly you can do anything, essentially. So depending on how far you're able to actually manipulate these stats, could completely affect who you are as a character. Will you be super fast and light and small? Will you be this huge brute of a character that hits hard but can take a lot of damage? It opens up a bit of a class variation almost, a tank or a rogue DPS type. It's pretty neat, pretty cool to think about. As far as the carry weight system goes, they said there's no hard number, however, you can be over encumbered, and you'll know this by moving slower. Death and unconsciousness, it looked kind of shoddy there in the beginning of the development of it, it was just a black screen and that was essentially it, and it says uh, you have been knocked unconscious. However, they added a UI element to it that allows you to press or hold down a key to let go. It kind of reminds me of DayZ, I like their system anyway, so I'm good with this. The melee weapons, I found out in, in terms of their actual physicality, their impact to zombies or players, their weaponized use, they got inspiration from Left 4 Dead 2, and now act similarly to them, making them easier to use. So if you were a fan of melee weapons in Left 4 Dead, you're going to be a huge fan of the melee weapons here in this game. Something that they did not talk about, but were still on the screen, so they meant to show it, were the perks. The perks were shown right underneath the attribute system, the CETA system. And they didn't they didn't show a lot, but it showed some things. It showed three things. It showed desensitized, country born, and astronomer. So I don't know what these perks do. One can make you a great land navigator using the stars. One, I guess, depending on where you're born, could give you some different regional benefits. And then desensitized, who knows? I don't know. Maybe you just you're afflicted by apathy. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, they also added soccer field assets. Just a little, you know, fun thing there. They are soccer balls and a soccer field and soccer nets and all that good stuff. But guys, that is about it. I will say this. In summary, though it was a short video, it was packed full of a lot of key information. We covered medical issues. We covered assets. We covered weapons. The new player attribute system. The CETA system carry weight system, death and unconsciousness, melee weapons, perks. We covered so much in this video and they covered so much in this short vlog and I can't wait for the next one. So developers, great job. Keep it going. I can't wait for the closed alpha. And as for everybody else, if you like this video and are a fan of scares, survival and scavenging, consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell button so you never miss a video. And I will see you in the next one. Path out. Thank you.